Welcome to the 6-Minute Strategies presentation. First of all, a quick word about my methodology. I like to try and cover, for any single issue, 6 points in 6 minutes using my magic hexagon structure, so you'll see a bit more of these as we go through. Today I'd like to look at the um, whole M&A process and just try and put a little bit of structure and shape around that. I'll cover this under the following headings, planning, preparation, partners, proceeds, process and pitfalls. And I had some fun trying to find six things like that beginning P, I can tell you. First of all, planning. Um, it's important when you're putting a, a, an M&A process together, whether you're buying or selling, that you establish a core transaction team. Uh, this should comprise an advisor, some external and internal shareholders as appropriate and it's important to manage, you know, to have the process properly managed. You need to be clear about the objectives of the sale process. You need to look at other options other than just a sale. Maybe um, you could merge or spin something off or you know, uh, organize a sale rather than a strategic partner to a financial partner. Um, you can also consider recapitalization, making an acquisition, IPO, or actually doing nothing. So there, there's always you know, lots of op options in front of you rather than just the one you're sitting down immediately to consider. Um, evaluate your approach to the, um, the whole sale process. You know, do you want to do a targeted rifle shot uh, process? Do you want to have a sort of limited auction or a, a broadly based sale process? Um, it's important to get at the start the agreement and the consensus from all shareholders. Um, this is really important to actually keep the process coherent as you go through it. Uh, also, early on in the process, make sure you've got your accounting and legal advisors uh, at least lined up, uh, if not appointed. On to the preparation then. In this stage, um, it's important to uh, establish in your own mind how you're going to position the company for sale. Okay, You need to pull together all the appropriate documentation and verify it. So you're going to need a teaser, you're going to need an information memorandum, you're going to need financial projections, uh, you're going to need a sales process letter, a list of data room contents at the very least. So as you can see there's quite a lot of, of documentation to get sorted out. You'll also need uh, from all this to prepare a management presentation, um, which will be uh, an opportunity for the management to show them, showcase themselves as much as the company. So this is a really important exercise. The data room for the due diligence process needs to be organized well in advance. And this is going to cover a whole range of things, but not exclusively you know, legal stuff, accounting, environmental, pensions, contracts and loan agreements, particularly if they've got change of control in clauses in them, and any regulatory issues. So uh, that requires um, early and urgent attention. Um, you should consider your communication strategy both internally and externally, and whether you're going to employ a PR firm. And then finally, you need to um, agree a timetable for the process and particularly uh, consider the impact that public holidays and management plans might have on the, uh, the whole exercise. So, potential partners. Um, it's important to um, you know, understand where your business sits in the market. Okay, as part of that, you then need to be clear about its unique selling points and be able to explain those to a potential buyer. Um, you should be able to um, match your business to the various and appropriate segments of the market um, and identify any adjacent character categories where the company can offer product or service whether it's geographic or sector suspension to a potential partner. So be, be clear about how what you're doing will fit with potential partners. From this, um, it's possible then to start drawing up a long list of potential buyers, which after some further work, you should be able to reduce to a tier A and a tier B shortlist. Uh, and this should be done not just on a national, but also consider doing it on a, on a global basis. Proceeds. Um, it's important to understand the your own mind about the valuation of the com company. You need to understand its history, its current trading and its forecasts along with the risk factors associated with those. But you need to be clear in your own mind at the start where you think the value of the business is going to be. Um, you should sit down with all uh, shareholders, particularly all major shareholders, and uh, agree in advance the 
um, range of acceptable outcomes um, in terms of the proceeds, in terms of value and types of um, proceeds you're going to receive. And, and whether this is cash or shares or loan notes, different shareholders may well have different priorities. Um, this is quite a good time to, to judge your view against comparable transactions to make sure that you're being realistic and also to look carefully at the historic um, valuations that have been made by investors in the past. So are you trying to get a valuation of the company which is effectively higher or lower than people have paid in the past? Uh, this is obviously assuming that it, you're a private company. Public companies, you can look at the trading history and the market, uh, the market value you know, over time. And finally, uh, it's important when you're talking to um, potential partners, you have a very clear view about their ability to pay. So a quick word then on the process. Um, you start off with the initial contact um, where you uh, should be seeking to identify the key executives in the buyer companies. You need to get your teaser document into their hands. You need to get them to sign the NDA. Um, and then once they've done that, you can issue them with the information memorandum and where an appropriate um, uh, answer further questions. Uh, after you've, you've distributed this information and they've had a chance to digest it, you really need to try to draw from them in indications of interest and of value. And the best way to do this is to give them a standard template against which to submit um, uh, in non-binding indicative offers. Uh, from this, um, you should be able to draw up a shortlist of potential buyers with whom you can negotiate terms um, and then move it these negotiations on into um, uh, with a limited number of parties indeed into due diligence um, and uh, establish with them their um, you know the various conditions they're going to attach to any offer and particularly reinforce this point, find out that they have the ability to finance the deal. Uh, then you can um, start getting into stage one of DD where you're drafting the first draft of the sale and purchase agreement. Uh, make sure that your lawyers do this if at all possible um, and provide access to the data room on a limited basis to potential buyers. Uh, you can make management presentations and allow site visits if you deem this to be appropriate. Uh, so phase two of the due diligence, things are getting a bit more nitty gritty here. Um, you may well be in exclusivity by this point, if not before indeed. And you'll want a very clear timetable to completion, uh, which will involve the completion of due diligence and finally finalizing any negotiations with the purchaser. And then finally, you want to close the deal. You want to get the, um, the, the, the sell and purchase documentation and any other documentation signed. There's normally a table full of this stuff. Um, and you need to manage your communications uh, announcing the deal with your external and internal shareholders. Um, a few pitfalls to bring to your attention. Uh, momentum is critical. You do need to keep this process moving forward with you and your advisors. Uh, it's important to maintain the auction tension so that you uh, keep people feeling they're bidding against each other. It's important to be get personally engaged, particularly as a principal, so that you start to build an early relationship and trust with some of the serious uh, advisors. This will pay dividends later in the process. Uh, be aware that this whole process is very time consuming and it will take up an awful lot of your time. But please don't lose sight of the business because uh, too often businesses have gone off the rails uh, when management have lost um, lost their focus. And the final comment I would make is um, don't allow any nasty surprises to emerge later in the process. And it comes back to this full disclosure point. It's important that you um, are very upfront and very open uh, because if you do hit them with a nasty late in the process, this will certainly impact your relationship with the potential buyers. So there we are, a very quick run through the sale process for a business. Uh, there's the nested hexagon diagram. Um, if you found this um, helpful and interesting, then um, I am the Six Minute Strategist. This has been a presentation on the sales process, covering the points you can see now appearing on the screen. Um, my blog, the Six Minute Strategist, is at jbdcolly.com, and you can find me on Twitter at jbdcolly. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you again uh, for another presentation.